Hello, welcome to another class of digital design with Verilog. Today class we will discuss about FPGA. So, whenever we are designing any digital design with Verilog, so whenever we write any Verilog code, we need to somehow simulate and uh, test the th test the code or sometimes we can download onto FPGA and you can test the design. So, let us see what is FPGA and how we can do. So, today class outline is uh, EDA. EDA means electronics design automations. So, can we automate digital design process? First thing is uh, we can design any digital circuit particularly sequential or combinational and you can model using Verilog. After modeling can we generate means uh, what you can say some kind of ICs from that. So, simply modeling may not be sufficient we should be able to use it for further purpose. So, EDA particularly electronic design automations is a topic or a branch of uh, what you can say computer science or electronics. So, where uh, we automate the digital design process starting from the Verilog code specification of in Verilog or BSDL code to completely coming out with chip IC design completely ICs and in IC design what is the flow? So, particularly application specific ICs or regular ICs what is the flow and there is a another thing also we generally cover in this course that is called FPGA based design today class will cover what is FPGA and what is the flow for FPGA. So, FPGA particularly it is a configurable hardware it is a hardware just like a similar to processor run any digital system on top of FPGA similar to processor where we can run any program on processor any C program can be run on processor because processor is programmable. Similar FPGA is configurable reconfigurable. So, you can reconfigure at any point of time and you can run any hardware program. So, configurable it is a configurable hardware. So, in FPGA flows we can specify the SDL ok very lock uh, code of any uh, system uh, digital systems and we can generate bit file you can generate configure file and you can configure the FPGA to run as our design. So, that is why FPGA is uh, more popular and what is the architecture of FPGAs and how people do that we will see, but at very very high level. If you look at the design flow, so what is the hardware design flow, what is software design flow and what is actually FPGA. So, in software we specify the what you can say specifications in software design flow. So, particularly C, C++ code is initial specifications and from that whenever you compile it generate a binary code and for a particular machines if it generates binary code then you can run using uh, dot slash a dot out. So, it generate a executable hole and whenever you execute the executable file then it is give output. So, desired output whatever we specified in the program that program get executed and produce out output. In hardware designs, so we will see two categories. So, one category is uh, how to generate ICs, how to design ICs and other cases how to uh, run our what I can say uh, design on FPG. ok. So, FPG is a configurable hardware. So, hardware specifications, so we generally put HDL code either in Verilog or VHDL. Then we use a tool called means uh, synthesis tool. So, this process is synthesis and there are many uh, vendors for this so particularly Xilinx uh, then uh, Intel AMD they have actually Altera have actually synthesis even uh, Google have also open source synthesis open road have synthesis tool. So, many synthesis tools are there we can use any of the synthesis tool to generate the layout. So, layout is intermediate uh, form which have actually some set of netlist kind of things and then from layout we can do fabrications and we can uh, produce ICs. So, this is uh, uh, hardware design flow. So, ASIC design flow particularly IC design flow we can see and because FPGA is a means uh, what you can say configurable hardware and we can run any what you can say digital design on FPGA. So, in FPGA means uh, to run the code in FPGA what is the flow? So, if you look at the hardware specifications HDL code is same as here. So, both HDL specifications and synthesis almost same 
So, here you are getting layout, here you are getting net list and from this here the process is mapping place and route and it requires some input output constant because uh, FPGA has some specific set of input output ports. So, so, input output constant then mapping and place route process will generate the bit file. Once it generate bit file we can download to FPGA and once we download to FPGA it will act as our design. So, whatever we specified here, whatever is specified in the initial place. So, that will act as similarly just like whatever we put program. So, if you compile and run the program it uh, based on the specifications or behavior of program it executes in that way. Similarly, so whatever you specify in the SDL it will behave similarly in the bit file. So, whenever you download the bit file to FPGs. Suppose you are designing a error circuit in SDL and then you synthesize then do place and route then what will happen it will generate bit file. Once you gen dump or program the bit file onto a FPG okay onto a FPG. So, here uh, whatever bit file generated it is specific to FPG and that specific FPG need to be downloaded to specific FPG then only it will work because FPG is specific means IO constants are there and many constants are there it need to be specific. So, once we download this file to configuration or bit file to FPG then it will act as a means whatever we have specified in the SDL code. IC design process if you look at so IC design process uh, uh, initial idea so take sub, suppose you want to do something some initial ideas then in the design from the initial idea so you specify specify in specific language either we can uh, write in system C or Verilog or VSDL then we implement the things then model this is actually very high level uh, implementations and then this is modeling the things at high level then simulate it, synthesize it, verify it and simulate it. So, particularly synthesize means uh, it will generate lower level models, verification means whether the high level model and lower level model what is really doing or not or correspondence is not and simulation means test with uh, some uh, standard input and outputs. So, whether standard it gives some standard input and whether it can do the things or not it is behaving properly with clock or not that thing we get uh, tested. Verification is a, a kind of a verification simulation kind of testing whether our things are working or not properly and once we do the designs in this process then uh, we get a layout A uh, layout things go to the fabrications fabrications after fabrications we get a die and after die we test the die again whether this die is correct die or not and then after that we go for packaging and package after packaging process we get the ICs and once we get the ICs then again we need to put into the PCB and then this PCB need to be put into the system. So, ultimately whole system get in this process in this process. So, in digital design course mostly we focus on this part only design part. So, how you can specify designs. So, from the idea how you can uh, specifying Verilog or SDL, how can synthesize it, how can simulate it. Okay. So, this is the IC design process we focus in digital design course we focus only up to this point only design part not the fabrications, testing, packaging these things we do not focus. But still uh, as a digital design course we should know. So, whenever you model some things what goes ultimately why we are doing ultimately we design the means uh, what I can say. Uh, any uh, digital systems and model it to get ICs or it get mapped to some FPGs. Let us look at what is uh, FPG. FPG is field programmable gate array. So, what is the basic uh, what I can say fundamentals behind the FPG. So, if you look at multiplexer, multi multiplexers, if you look at multiplexers, so what happens? So, multiplexer have so, two, 2 select lines in this case 4 plus 1 multiplexers, 2 select line and 4 input lines okay, and 1 output and with the 4 plus 1 multiplexers, 2 select line okay, with 2 select line we can implement any functions of 2 inputs. So, in this case any function of 2 input y is equal to app a b any function of two input we can implement. Okay, simply 
this things we can put as A, this thing you can put as B and based on the whatever value we specify here, the truth table of functions A, B. So, particularly truth table we can simply put it here and this multiplexer will behave the value of whatever the truth table we put here. So, that will act as actually the multiplexer will act as uh, that function it will we can implement any two input functions using a 4 plus 1 multiplexers and we can take this concept to means uh, uh, implement a larger thing ok. So, if you look at the things so in multiplexer what happens this is two select line and from this two select line this particular three things along with the inputs because they are all n gates it cover all the min terms it cover all the min terms. So, this is for 0 0 case this is for 0 1 case this is 1 0 case and this is 1 1 case and along with i 0 along with this is uh, i 1 i 2 and i 3 because it cover all the min terms we can implement any boolean function of 2 input. So, let us extend this to higher level. So, here if you this is the with 4 plus 1 marks one can implement any boolean function of 2 input in this case what we are saying is based on the truth table who are putting this truth table of the functions and based on the truth table because uh, for any boolean function of 2 input we can represent using truth table and this truth table if you if we put this truth table as input in i 0, i 3, i 2 and i 3 then we get the functions ok you can implement the functions. And in FPJ it uses the same concepts it uses a concept called lookup table. What is lookup table? LUT is a RAM with data width of 1 bit. So, whatever earlier we have seen. So, this is the actually this is a ultimately this is a RAM this is a 4 plus 1 RAM. So, 4 uh, 4 plus 1 RAM. So, this is 4 locations and 1 bit width. So, this is 4 plus 1 RAM. So, this whole thing is uh, this whole thing is actually 1 4 plus 1 RAM. So, with 4 plus 1 RAM we can implement any uh, function of 2 input and this bits are configurable bits. This is LUT if you can supply the LUT from outside then we can implement any functions. So, LUT is a RAM with data width one of 1 bit and the content are programmed at power of or we can reconfigure we can uh, configure the bit the RAM bit ok. Based on the uh, bits in the RAM bits in the lookup table. So, it will act like that kind of functions boolean functions ok. So, this is suppose required function like this then uh, create the truth table. So, this is the y is equal to a dot b plus c bar and this is 3 input and we create the truth table this is the truth table truth table for this functions. Suppose you want to implement this functions just put this truth table in the RAM. Suppose to implement this suppose we want a means uh, 8 cross 1 8 input 1 RAM then this is the select line select line. So, this is ABC select line and this one is a uh, uh, LUT LUT means actually uh, RAM of 1 bit width. So, this is actually 8 locations 8 locations 8 locations and 1 width and whatever we are putting value here in this case we are putting that whatever the truth table whatever the truth table we are putting in this RAM and it will act as our desired circuit. So, required function is this and if we put this truth table in this RAM then it will act as the required boolean functions. Now, this RAM is configurable you can put whatever value we want ok. So, now lookup table can be used to program 
for any combinational functions okay so implementing four input logic functions using three input LUT suppose this is three input LUT another three input LUT using three input LUTs okay three select line input LUTs here in this case there will be eight cross one eight locations one bit RAM will be there in this case also eight cross one is there eight locations one bit per locations RAM is there okay so this is three select line three select line input LUT. So, if you have two three select input LUTs then we can implement actually four input logic functions using two input LUT similar to so how we can implement uh, uh, four input functions using uh, two eight cross one marks. So, similar here we are using enable signals. So, enable signal this uh, enable signal if e is equal to 0 then this will enable this guy if this is for 0 and this is for 1 this will enable this guy okay so in this way so we can implement four input functions using two three input LUT okay so this is a we can make it actually a four input LUT so we can make it actually in this case it is four input LUT and we can extend this so for two four input LUT we can make it actually uh, five input logic functions also we can make okay so this is actually how we can implement uh, five input logic functions using two four input LUT so in this case it is a uh, two four select input and using the same enable signals so we can implement five input logic functions using two four input LUTs so this is very easy way how we can implement using boxes and this uh, uh, basic theory behind this uh, implementation of higher order higher uh, number little uh, uh, boolean functions is uh, using Shannon expansion theorem. So, used to implement many variables logic functions using mocks and LUDs. Suppose you want have you want have a functions f x 1 x 2 up to x n this is a n variable boolean functions and this n variable boolean functions can be implemented using two LUT of what I can say n minus 1 input. Similarly, earlier cases so 5, five variables boolean functions can be implemented using two four input LUT. So, same things here. So, here we are generalizing to n variables. So, we can implement n variable boolean functions using so, two n minus 1 variables LUTs. So, similar concepts. So, here x 1 bar and x 1. So, what you can x 1 bar dot f functions in place of uh, x 1 we are putting 0 and rest of the things are same and in this case x 1 and we are putting 1 and rest of the things are same ok. So, this is a Shannon expansion since x 1 is a boolean variable so we need to look at only 2 cases x 1 is equal to 0 what happens and x 1 is equal to 1 what, what happens. If you set x 1 is equal to 0 then if you look at x 1 is equal to 0 then these things will be activated because this is 1 and this one is 0 that means this things will be get into 0. So, ultimately you will get this one. If uh, x 1 is equal to 0 then whatever the functions f x 1 up to x n is same as f 0 x 2 up to x n. So, similarly for x 1 x 1 is equal to 1 then because this thing is uh, x 1 dx then it will be 0 and this term will be got converted to 0 and this one will be comes here. So, in this way we can implement so n variable boolean functions using two n minus one variable LUT and similarly we can recursively we can come down to lower number of variables boolean variables. So, with this philosophy so FPJ works ok. So, FPJ have lot of logic functions ok. So, LUTs and how actually means uh, 
uh, in FPJ people designs. So, in digital circuits, digital systems, so we use uh, not only the combinational circuit, but we need to go for sequential circuit also. Somehow we should be able to implement sequential circuit also. So, sequential circuit means we should have a some flip flop, some uh, basic flip flop, suppose D flip flop if we can embed somewhere, then we can implement uh, both sequential and combinational circuits. So, this is actually example. So, in this case suppose 4 input uh, and gate using LOT. So, suppose this is 4 input LUTs are there. So, in this case 4 input LUT means 16 in this case 16 cross 1, 16 locations 1 bit RAM is there. Okay. So, based on inputs, so whatever the two table for 4 input and gate, this is a 4 input and gate lookup table, we put this configuration bit value here. In this case last bit is 1 only, rest of the cases join 0 and this is the configuration bit. Once you put the configuration bit, then in general, so this is simple lookup table. So, if simple type lookup table is means added with a flip flop, suppose there is a another mux is there where we can go for either means a combinational output or sequential output. So, if it goes through flip flop, if it goes through flip flop, then it is sequential output. If it goes through only boxes, not through flip flop. Okay, then it is actually combinational. So, this path particularly this path is if this bit is 1, so suppose this is uh, 0 and this is 1. So, this if this bit is 0, then it is selecting this input. So, this blue input. So, it is actually we can implement any combinational circuit of 4 inputs. So, whenever it goes through means this input of MOX then it is going through the flip flop. So, going through the flip flop means we need to give clock input and so 4 input any boolean function of 4 input and a flip flop. So, any boolean function of 4 input and a flip flop this is a d flip flop this is clocked one. So, now this circuit can be used as any uh, what I can say basic block for to implement sequential circuit. So, so this have actually two things if its MOX bit is uh, this MOX control bit is 0 then it is act as combinational circuit okay. and if this MOX bit is 1 then it goes through the flip flop and you can use the flip flop. Flip flop is actually sequential element it have actually clock also and it can act as sequential circuits and this is FPGA field programmable gate array. So, every uh, FPGA have this elements CLB that is called programmable logic block or configurable logic block and this have logic elements. It can implement both combinational and sequential circuit based on LUT and flip flop. So, this CLB or PLB what to say this have actually one D flip flop, one LUTs and one MOX. So, here there is a configuration bit here you can put this what kind of RAM bits we are putting. Okay. So, the particularly truth table we will put here and here configuration bit and here reset and clocks are there. We can because it have D flip flops. So, we should be able to reset the D flip flop, we should be able to means put the clock. Okay. So, the CLB have this kind of things and with this CLBs we can implement both combinational and logic based circuits. Okay. Both combinational and sequential circuit we can implement and FPJ have many CLBs programmable logic block implement combinational single cell logic based on LUT and flip flop and FPJ have many CLBs. Okay. So, maybe in term of thousands or millions of CLBs and it have programmable IO. So, configurable IO for external connection support various voltage and tri states and because not only FPJ we require, we require I mean, some kind of interconnect also. So, FPGA have programmable interconnects where to connect input, output and logic blocks, clocks and shortest distance local connections and long distance uh, connections across chips. So, this 
APG have this three major things pro CLB, programmable IO blocks and programmable interconnects. And if you look at overall it looks like, so these are actually green part is logic blocks, this is LUT plus uh, flip flop. These are actually interconnections, this is switch block, this is our interconnection or switch block SB, this is CLB and these are actually IOs, programmable IOs, these are programmable IOs for different some tri-state buffer, some kind of voltage that programmable things are there. So, with this configurable IO, configurable switch box and configurable CLB, with this combinations, this whole FPJ is configurable. So, we can put any digital circuit on top of this and we can test it. Because this fabric is configurable just like processor and processor on top of processor we can run any program similar to an FPJ, we can test digital circuits, sequential or combinational circuit, we can test the things on FPG. And how much big circuit we can test based on the number of available components. So, number of available CLB and uh, switch box, how much big based on that how much bigger circuit you can put onto the FPGs. FPG structure it have many CLBs, okay. there are CLBs, here in this case we are showing 4 CLBs and uh, 5 switch box. So, this is configurable logic block, this is interconnection and this is IOs. This blacks represent IO, okay. so this green represent configurable logic box and this is blue represent switch box. And let us zoom what the inside CLB, already you have seen CLB. If you look at CLBs, if you zoom the CLB, it have actually a lookup table and a flip flop and a MOX, already you have seen. If you zoom the switch box, then it have actually programmable interconnects. So, these are array of interconnections, this is array of interconnections, array of interconnections and for every, so in this case 3 line, 3 vertical line, 3 horizontal line. So, that is why we require this many 3 horizontal line, 3 vertical line, so in this case 1, 2, 3 switch box kind of thing will be there, okay. For every things, this 3 will be there and for every points, every interconnections points, so we have uh, this kind of configurable what I can say interconnections, configurable interconnections. Let us look at the what is configurable interconnections in more details. So, this configurable interconnections, so for every, this vertical line, this is horizontal line, for every vertical line, so we have actually four this boxes, switch boxes, okay, four sub switch boxes and how this sub switch boxes look like? It looks like this and we can control. So, this line, if you look at this dotted line are configurable based on the configuration binary, this will be established. This is not hardware. If you look at this part is hardware, this black part is hardware, but dotted line are configurable. Configurable means based on the configuration bit, we can configure. So, let us uh, look at more closely. So, clearly, so this have actually 6, six uh, uh, path, 6 path. So, if you look at the 6 path, so what is the north south path? First one is east west path, north south path, then this is a north east path, then north west path, north east path, okay, then south east path, south east path, then south west path. So, these have actually all means uh, 6 directions. If you look at uh, this. Uh, a road crossing kind of thing, there are four, six uh, connections. So, we require six bit configurations. So, and how we can do? Suppose this is the actually uh, actual, there is a DRAM cell where you can put the value 1 or 0. If it is 1, then these two lines are connected, okay. If this is 1, then these two lines are connected. So, this is the switch based on the configuration bit, we require six configuration bit. Then, if it is, suppose this bit is 1, then this is north and south are connected. So, if it is bit is 1 means we can store the bit using flip flop and if that flip flop is set then it is that line is connected. So, it is configurable interconnect. So, earlier how we studied configurable block, logic block where you can implement sequential and combinational circuit using configurable logic block. But suppose you want to implement larger circuit then you require many CLBs to implement. So, Whenever we want many CLB to implement a bigger functions, then we require interconnections. And 
this is routing path routing path can be uh, goes through the uh, this switch box switch box and suppose in this uh, design suppose you want to use uh, so this uh, uh, these are the inputs so these are the suppose you want to implement uh, some circuits where it require three inputs and one output so in this case what you are using so this shall be this shall be and this shall be you are using suppose then these things need to be shall be 1 to shall be shall be 0 to shall be 1 we need to we want some connections and suppose shall be 1 to shall be 3 we want some connections that means this lines so in this case we are creating two connections in this case first case in the first case so this bit this north to south this particular line need to be 1 and in this case east to west particularly west to east that line that line need to be 1 this is 1 bit so whatever we are putting so we are putting the configuration bit based on our requirement so we can put the configuration bit so that it can connect to CLB and now whenever this number of CLB and switch connection switch box are very bigger so we cannot do manually so that need to be some tool or some automated program to do these things ok. So, this EDA industry so electronics design automation for FPGA, FPGA place and route that is called PAR place and route it do the placement and routing it select the which shall be to be used and how they are need to be interconnected how they are the path need to be routed through switch box that get designed and if you look at FPGA design flow. So, we have specifications then specifications we can do with a Verilog or HDL once we specify the design using Verilog and HDL this is very high level specification this is detailed programming model level specification then we simulate the things simulate using model sim i sim or i Verilog so whatever you are using and then once you simulate the things then we synthesize and convert the to FPGA logics and FPGA cases then we put timing constants so whether it matches the timing constant then we put IO constant and IO constant we get from actually boards. So every FPJ boards or FPJ fabric have actually IO constants. So which are the IO ports available and what are the port numbers as I said with that IO port. So we need to put that thing and based on this it do placement and routing which logic block it selects and how the switch box gets selected and to which IOs. And after that it do a timing synthesis whether it if needed and then it generate a bit file. So, it takes the XDC file this IO constants timing constants and it do place and route after doing place and route it generate bit file once a bit file it get generated for a particular FPG. So, we can send the that bit file to the specific FPG to we can download onto FPGA and we can test the uh, that uh, whatever the web specified using Verilog and we can I mean, uh, prototype the things whether this whatever the our design is working or not not simulations now it is more than simulations so an FPGA it is working or not we can test ok and FPGA have uh, designing with FPGA is faster and cheaper suppose you want to go for a very big designs then fabrication is very difficult so it's we can go with FPGs so we can test our bigger design on FPG so that it will be quickly test your design easy for educational setups and ideal for courses ideal for customized design suppose your uh, we do not want to go for a cheap design process because cheap design process is very lengthy and costly process so we can have our design and test on FPG and we can sometimes we can use uh, the FPG design thing on real product also. Other advantage of is high integrations, uh, high complexity, density and reliability nowadays FPGA are coming with very very high densities. So millions of CLBs uh, are also coming and nowadays it is consuming lower power, lower cost as compared to processor or any other system. But here the one thing is uh, it is actually not as good as ASIC because ASIC you need to put lot of efforts so you need to design ICs completely, you need to fabricate completely. But we can avert many problem of ASIC. So, many uh, non recurring cost long delay in design and testing because whenever you are going for actual ICs we need to deal with all electrical issues all detail issues unless it will be 
FLTICs. But in case of FPG, it is done in everything done in softwares and uh, it generate bit file and just download the bit file. If it is not working, you can regenerate and redo the things. These things are much more easier. And it is programmable device, basically field programmable device, logic block, routing, input matrix and more advanced uh, uh, FPGA device may contain unchip memory, embedded processor, clock management, high speed transceiver, many things it contain. And we are showing two uh, FPGA boards, particularly Xilinx, uh, Digilens Xilinx Altis FPGA board. We are not advertising for Xilinx, but uh, uh, this is more popular board that is how we are showing. Xilinx Button 6, LX45, this app. And this app actually, I look at 6, 7000, around 7000 slices, 4 input LUTs, and with 8 flip flops. It have actually some RAM also, 2 megabit of RAM, 2.1 megabit, 128 MB DDR2. 58 DSP slice means it is actually MAC unit, multiply and accumulate unit. And it have others uh, uh, facilities just like JTAG programming, Ethernet port, HDMI ports, UART port and general GPIO. So, general purpose IO, 8 LED, 6 push button and 8 slide switches are there. You can see this is actually digital and both. These are the switches. These are the LEDs, these are the LEDs. So, very small design you can do with actually uh, switches and LEDs. And for bigger design you can use uh, USB port, you can use HDMI port, you can use push button switches, any other things we can design and you can test our bigger designs. And it is very means, uh, easy to design on top of FPG instead of going for full IC design process. So, this is another example digital. Uh, Xilinx basis board. So, this have actually Xilinx Arctic 7 FPG. So, this have uh, 33,000 logic cell okay. So, and 5200 slices. This is uh, 1.8 uh, Mbits of RAM and 90 DSP slices. And these are actually this uh, boards are very uh, cheaper board. So, around 200 dollars around uh, 18 to 20,000 rupees uh, we spend then we will get this board and we can do our FPG programming. So, this, this have also 16 switches, 16 LEDs, 5 user buttons, 4 LED segment displays and it have actually 12 bit VGS, you have a very good USB UART bridge, you can connect to PCs, you can send data to uh, this uh, basis board, basis FPGA board and you can do the competitions and get back the competition to the PC. You can communicate with the PC to FPGA and do the competitions. And this is the actual Xilinx basis 3 board. So, these are actually 16 switches. If you look at these are the 16 switches and these are actually 16 LEDs. These are the 16 LEDs and there are 5 switch push button switches are also there and other ports are also there and these are 4, 7, 7 LEDs we can use. So, suppose you want to design a means a digital clock. Digital clock also we can uh, design with this 4, 7 segment LEDs it can display hours and minute kind of that kind of design also can put. Let us see how we can design a very small designs with the basis FPGA. And whenever we are designing any FPGAs using FPGA to prototype or test, so huge, so in general for this kind of boards we use Xilinx ISC or BYDOS. So, in this case what do we need to create a new projects with IC number of basis board, write Verilog, Verilog code, write the code for your designs but suppose uh, take an example of full headers. So, we will show the code, synthesize it, simulate the things in Vibardo, write the IO constant and XDC file, implement the designs using place and route and using place and route buttons or implement buttons. It will generate the bit file for the FPGs and after generation of bit file, we can download or program the FPG. So, once we program the FPG, the FPG will work like our designs. In this case, suppose example is full adder, then it will act as full adder. So, this is Verilog code for full adder. So, this is we know the what is Verilog code for full adder. So, this is 3 input A, B and C in and output is sum and carry and this is design using structural Verilog. So, suppose this Verilog code we want to port into FPG. Okay. So, then what are the input output? So, in the FPG design process we need to specify the design constant. So, IO design constant particularly XDC. Okay. So, uh, design constants. So, design constant particularly put A, B and C input. So, where it get to which switches it get mapped. So, B17, B16 and W16 it is mapped and 
where the output, output input need to map to switches and output need to map to LEDs. So, in this case some and carry it map to LEDs. So, these are the port for LEDs and these are the port for switches, these are the port for switches and these are the extra lines, this is the standard format are there. So, we will use standard formats. So, this all three inputs and this is outputs for outputs. Here we are specifying the constant design constants. So, once we specify the design constant and implement it, synthesize and implement it, it will generate the bit files. So, once we generate the bit file for the particular FPGA board, we can download the FPGA configuration bit file to the FPGA. So, once we generate bit file and download the FPGAs, the particular FPGAs, then what will happen? It will act like whatever our design. So, in this case, so we have configured this three switches per inputs A, B and C and two LEDs per sum and displaying sum and carry. And here based on the this switches, okay, so input value of switches, the sum and carry will give the outputs. Okay, so, in this way we can test our very small design on FPGs. So, we do not need to fabricate the ICs, but on, on FPGA we can test our design. This is very small example, but we can go for bigger example also. Many sequential, counter, whatever we have studied, even multiplier, even clock, bigger uh, design also we can put onto FPGs. And with FPGA, the it is very good to have actually design put into FPJ so that we can uh, test whether our design is running on a real system or not. And FPJ is uh, much better of as compared to going for complete uh, IC design process. IC design process not only lengthy, but it is costly also. Okay. Thank you.